root of thorn, root of fire. What the fuck is elk sedge? What the hell is the chapter on evil magical dicks? Oh shit. One more time for opening space. Got a movie to review. Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Dragon Shadow, the universe now the best air. And welcome back to. The Summer of And while Halloween H2O had its ups and downs, it did well enough to warrant a sequel four years later with Halloween Resurrection. Named so because the studio wanted to make sure audiences knew, yes, Michael Myers is alive and well. Never mind what you saw in H2O, Resurrection also continued the idea of doing a trendy Halloween flick by following just about every trend popular at the time. Reality television, found footage, internet culture, hell, even texting. Unfortunately, it would seem that in 2002, interesting characters and well-written stories weren't exactly in. So instead, we follow a random assortment of teenagers who each have about one character trait and base all their acting around that. A reality show broadcast live across the internet Big Brother style is showcasing six teens as they investigate the old Myers house. A terrible idea in its own merits, but in the movie, of course, Michael Myers shows up and slaughters everyone in the worst camera angles possible. It's enough to make the Rune of Cock subplot sound downright Shakespearean. Anyway, let's take a look at Halloween Resurrection and get this over with. I'm sure you'll understand soon enough, as the opening establishes first and foremost where Laurie Strode is hanging out. She's in a sanitarium! The poor lady went crazy after the events of Halloween H2O, but even worse than that is when they go back to change a few details around to explain how the fuck Michael Myers is still alive, even though we clearly saw Laurie decapitate the motherfucker in the last movie. Because Michael changed places with a paramedic! Oh, Myers, you zany slasher villain, you. Well, why didn't the paramedic say something? His larynx had been crushed. Okay, now we just need to explain why I didn't just take off the mask, or do this, or maybe not attack Laurie Strode and act exactly like Michael Myers, spare some doofy shit when he was pinned against the tree. And let's be honest here, Michael was plenty doofy all throughout H2O. So that badass moment has been reduced to Laurie Strode being a dumbass and a murderer. Might explain why she wound up in the asylum instead of prison. Being given medication to numb her numbness, but what's this? She isn't taking it, but hiding it. Not sure what it does, but without it, she does see this. Yeah, he just dis a fucking beard while she was looking at him in the middle of the big open field with nothing for him to hide behind, but that could still very well be the real Michael Myers right there. On to even less important characters, security guard Willie, played by Dan Joffrey, and spare escaped mental patient Harold, played by Gus Lynch. Who are you supposed to be today? Oh. John Wayne Gacy. Born in Chicago, Illinois, on March 17th, 1942. Yeah, Gacy, the killer clown. But, Harold, if you're the savant you're supposed to be, you should realize that there's absolutely no evidence anywhere to ever suggest that John Wayne Gacy killed anyone while dressed as a clown. It was just his day job. Also, it's not how that clown mask looked. That clown mask looks a lot more like Michael Myers' clown mask. Which means it's likely not a mistake. Willie escorts the man back to his room, but it seems his fellow security guard friend has bad news. Harold got out again! Or someone, anyway, slinking around in the basement like some kind of stalkery slasher villain. No bother, they can go down there to get him together. And by that, I mean the other guy can go off alone while Willie makes sure the vending machine is okay. What's gotten into you? <laughs> oh god, first it's the pineapple pizza, but now Michael's moved on to organic sugar-free kale chips. When Willie goes to investigate, though, he finds a laundry room, and in the midst of the bloody sheets, his friend's severed head. Probably could have guessed it would be in there based on the decapitated corpse in the middle of the room, to be honest. Either way, inexplicably inept guards are the best way to ensure that the body count rises. With the guards out of the way, Myers has no one left to stop him from bashing into Laurie Strode's room and killing her! Except he's still falling for that fake body in the bed routine, and then ends up having to chase the woman up to the roof of the building, but then... ends up being captured like Wile E. Coyote, only with slightly less dignity. 
which leaves him at the mercy of Laurie Strode, certifiable badass. Except, of course... I just have to be sure. She's fucked up because they changed the ending of H2O. Gotta be a complete fucking moron now, I guess. Because no surprise, it was indeed Michael Myers. And now that he successfully fucked up Laurie Strode's plans to kill him... <laughs> He just fucking kills her. On screen this time. While you could fart around and say that maybe Halloween 4, 5, and 6 did happen in the same timeline as H2O, there is no question that this bullshit was stricken from the record in preparation for Halloween 2018. Now that the only damn reason anyone picked up this movie in the first place is fucking dead, we can move on to the introducing the really important characters. No, not anyone in the asylum. We never see those assholes again. Instead, we teleport far, far away to a school where we can meet Sarah Moyer, played by Bianca Kylik, as she answers questions while twirling her hair. Ha! <laughs> Such a callback. We must face down our fears and face up to the figure he called what? The Shadow. The Shadow. The Shadow. The shadow! The shadow! The shadow. Before she can Darya her way off to that sweet, sweet solitude she so desires, her inexplicably bubbly friend shows up, Jen, played by Katie Sackoff, who ushers Sarah to their other friend, Rudy, played by Sean Patrick Thomas. We're in. They picked all three of us. What? Are you serious? Uh-huh. Oh, God. Shut up! Dude, curb your excitement. You are a black guy in a horror movie. The thing they signed up for is this reality show called Dangertainment. Think of it like Big Brother meets CSI, but with dumb teenagers who have no fucking idea what an investigation even is, or what they're getting into. Not to worry, random passerby points out that this particular episode is going to be the Myers house, former home of Michael Myers, and we all know about him! Then one day, he picked up a knife, and he never put it down again. You really want to freak him out, kid? Tell him about the tattoos and the ancient cult and the niece fucking. Ma! Ma! They. They do realize they're not supposed to be in the sanitarium anymore, right? Speaking of crazy shit, Sarah here has an online friend she simply must tell the good news, Deckard. This internet personality, though, is actually Miles Barton, who is actually Ryan Merriman. And along with helping her with various school things, he tends to lie about who he is in the world. His friend Scott, played by Billy Kay, calls him out for his online persona BS, but Deckard isn't nearly the most important face in this movie. Okay, I'd like to start this off by saying, the search is over. We got Busta fucking rhymes over here! LL Cool J works because he's LL Cool J. You can't replicate that. I wonder if the new Halloween movie is going to give a starring role to Lil Jon. Michael! What? You six have been selected to explore America's worst nightmare. The Department of Motor Vehicles. Or the Myers House, as explained by Buster Rhymes. Or, as I call him here, Freddie Harris. He and Tyra Banks, who plays Nora, run the show Dangertainment. And along with Sarah and friends, we have three more assholes to go to the house. Bill, played by Thomas Ian Nichols, Donna, played by Daisy McCracken, and finally Jim, played by Luke Kirby. They each have their one character trait and base every single decision around that. Never underestimate the effect of a poor diet. Too much protein, not enough zinc. Next thing you know, you're cutting up bodies in your bathtub. I mean, look at, uh, look at Hitler. He's a vegetarian. <laughs> because Rudy's a foodie. But what then makes Sarah so special? She screams at nothing and has the power to make things explode with her voice. At least, that one time. Never really happens again. And it's kind of amazing that her vocal cords are still intact after that. Buster Rhymes is pleased with his own personal star scream. However, she's having second thoughts about the show. Every other character has one character trait to base everything around, while Sarah's a boring-ass every-woman trope. Busta, however, ensures her she's perfect for the show. Every existing element about you is what the internet audience really wants. You are a walking, clickbait, cat video prank gone sexual. That refusing the call step taken care of, she agrees to go along with it, and even buy some smexy clothes at the behest of her best friend, but then is TERRIFIED of nothing. So it's back with that cocknugget Deckard, who tries to explain that he can't go to the Halloween party with his friend because he has plans to stay home and watch internet videos about the lady he's been catfishing all this time. Do you have any idea what it means for two freshmen to get invited? It's like it never happened before. Your sister invited us so you wouldn't tell your mother about her tattoo. Okay. 
that's besides the point. Ha! <laughs> Nothing like good old-fashioned blackmail to make me really like your character. This establishes that Deckard will be going to the party, he and Sarah also text each other on this pre-smartphone smartphone that somehow works, and Dangertainment has its Big Brother cameras all over the Myers house, but fuck that noise. The real money is in found footage bullshit, so they all have personal cameras to keep things extra low quality and shaky. Still, though, the house cameras are very important, and being set up by Charlie, played by Brad Sivon. Well, him and Michael Myers, I guess. But, oh, Tyra Banks is too busy putting whipped cream in her drink to notice. And it's hardly her fault here. Charlie just fucking stood there while the guy very slowly stabbed him. I'm not even gonna bother trying to figure out which one of them was a the stupider one in this situation. Look at you, Charlie. The nice angle, boy. <sighs> Never mind, she wins. The tripod is visible in that shot. It's a terrible angle. Once Buster arrives in the official Dangertainment minivan, the show can begin. Six teenagers, one night, the Myers house, and all the horrors they can uncover during their investigation. What are we gonna do? We don't have to do anything. Technically, we just have to be in the house. Aren't we supposed to be looking for answers? All right. The devil made him do it. Jesus fuck, talent search all of Haddonfield and this is the best you can come up with? The horrifying terror of procrastination man! We owe it to the people watching to at least take a look around. Oh, that's cute. You already worried about your uh, fan base? The show is airing live worldwide! What the hell are you trying to do? Get in a Guinness book for how fast you can tank ratings? They finally get their asses in gear, and Rudy the Foodie is the first to discover something. You gonna taste a 40-year-old fennel? I don't. It's gotta be rotten. That's strange. What? It smells fresh. God, I love preservatives. So, yeah, they spend most of the movie doing bullshit like this. <laughs> what, are you scared? Well, who the hell else could it have been? Are we supposed to believe that Michael's also walking around with a fucking GoPro? The important thing they find is a high chair, hidden away. It suggests that Michael was a little monster since birth. And they even have a giant prop key here for some reason. Well, who cares about any of that? It's time to see how the guys are doing at the party! Hey Miles, you think anyone will know it's supposed to be from Pulp Fiction? Uh, you do realize your character's supposed to be a black male, right? Uh, not that I'm <laughs> suggesting that you actually... Moving on, Deckard does what any sane person would do in this situation, and ditches his friend to hide alone in a room and fire up the internet. Unfortunately, he uses it to watch Dangertainment, so we're back to looking at the regular fucking movie. Ah! Shit! Careful, Jen. Mm. Hands off, bud. How about she falls through the next step, he doesn't catch her, and we can all watch her break her hip? So his advances fuck up, the equipment in the house fucks up, and Deckard's attempts to have some privacy with his internet is fucked up, as evidently watching internet videos beats teen fucking. However, over all of this boring is piss, half-hearted investigation while either trying to get laid or connecting everything to food so you know it's Rudy talking, they hear a scream! With no time to waste, they rush up the stairs to investigate! Jen? <laughs> Turn it down! And don't ask me how the people watching at home didn't see that coming, considering she has a camera strapped to her head. So it's nothing, and they all go about their separate ways. Bill, however, swears revenge. We're gonna get her back for that. Watch me. Nobody fucking notices. <laughs> people everywhere screaming, cameras everywhere, enough people at home watching that at least a few of them had to have seen that angle while he was getting killed, but eh, it's probably the wind. Busta and Tyra do notice the camera is out, but eh, no big deal. Most of them are still working and the show must go on. Jim and Donna, however, find a secret trap door and utilizing that handy dandy giant fucking key established earlier, they pry it open. See, they're looking for clues. You know, something that might explain why Michael Myers went bad. God damn it, Deckard, stop trying to explain the plot. Nobody cares. Anyway, as I was saying, the two of them head down to the secret cellar, wondering if it's where the Myers family chained Michael all those years ago. 
But more importantly, in the here and now, let's half-assedly try and remove our cameras real fast so we can get down to some good old-fashioned teen fucking. This is not what I meant when I said I needed a good bone! And surprise! This was actually all bullshit! Set up by Busta and Tyra, because reality shows have nothing to do with reality. Something that teens find out soon enough. Which should mean that people watching at home also realize this, but eh. The point is, it's time for Michael to stalk them. This is also a stunt Busta is pulling on them, but don't worry, the real deal shows up to this party as well. Oh shit, man! Sorry, where the fuck you been at, man? Don't you know we've been looking all over this motherfucker for you? And why the hell are you dressed like me anyway? Oh, but he thinks it's that cameraman that Michael impaled earlier. <laughs> Gotta hand it to the guy, he's really good at cleaning up blood fast. And hiding bodies just out of frame. Somehow, Busta berating the fuck out of Michael, telling him that this slasher killer shit is covered, and he needs to get the fuck out of here... works? Michael leaves Mr. Rhymes alone, in any case. Also, Jim leaves Donna behind so she can examine that hole the fake bodies fell out of. As it turns out, it leads back into the Haddonfield sewer system underneath the Myers house. Finding what looks like a little home away from home and dinner of half-eaten rodents, Donna figures this is just more shit that the Dangertainment team set up to scare them. Nice prop. I wouldn't think that's the most convincing thing. It's clearly a movie prop. Does nobody in horror movies smell anymore? Point is, it's real, and it's so real, the real Michael Myers really shows up to really back her into a corner and push her really hard until she's really impaled in this totally real reality show. Uh, that was so fake. No, no, wait, wait, you guys, that, that really just happened. She was just killed. murder. So hilarious. Deckard doesn't think so, but moving on, Sarah is next to be spooked by the shape of Michael Myers. Fortunately for her, everyone else is here to take this son of a bitch out! But oh, it's Busta Rhymes! And he does not seem too anxious to have video evidence of kids beating his ass. So the whole show goes offline while he takes the mask off and explains to them, for those of you in the back that didn't get it yet, the whole show is fake. They planted so-called evidence in the Myers house to spook them. If Dangertainment was actually representative of reality, nobody would watch it. Understanding this, they let him go and the show can continue. Right after this, though, Jen finds out they killed Bill and screams even louder than before. Can't scare us, Jen. You're gonna have to do better than that. <laughs> Yeah! He stopped being scary back in... Uh. Well, the point is, it's not gonna work! You too, Freddy. <laughs> uh, nice severed head trick. Seriously, not impressed. How'd you do that? <laughs> Some digital effects. No, it isn't! Hello, 911? Don't tempt me, movie. You don't want to know how many times I wished I could have called 911 over bad special effects. So, they're fucked, the door's locked, and there's only like 20 minutes of movie left, so let's keep that body count going. Run! Oh. Ah. Anyone in this situation ever think to maybe punch the slasher villain in the head? I mean, it'd be kind of hard with Jason with the hockey mask and everything, but latex shouldn't be nearly as much of a problem. Next to go is Rudy the foodie, and to that end, it's gotta be about food with him, bringing Michael into the kitchen. You should try a little less protein in your diet, you know? Control some of that aggression, huh? I oh, you know what they say, live by the chef's knife, die by the chef's knife. Which he does, being double-stabbed by Michael, pinned to the door, and finally impaled one last time for good measure. This leaves Sarah, Busta, and Tyra. So, not liking those odds, Sarah breaks the fourth wall. Somebody please help us. She really is a very talented actress. Well, Bianca probably has the best acting chops of anyone on set outside of Jamie Lee Curtis, but it's really not saying much. Decker! Decker, if you're there, please let me know. Oh, I'm here, bitch. I'm just waiting for the next time the body count rises. But this allows Deckard to remember, Oh yeah, I got this bitch!
witch's phone number and can contact her through this mystical power of texting. Using this and the fact that all the camera angles are accessible at any given time, he treats this like a Sega CD game, giving Sarah suggestions as to where to go and what to do in order to escape from Michael Myers. Eventually, though, she runs into Buster Rhymes, who is not too pleased that his show, staff, and film career were all butchered by Michael Myers. And thus, he takes on the slasher icon his damn self! So you want to be on Dangertainment? I'm gonna see what you got. Uh, yeah, he knows Kung Fu, because he watches a lot of Kung Fu movies. That is seriously the explanation they give. Where the hell did you learn to kick like that? Oh, um, Jackie Chan movies? Uh. Eventually, Buster kicks his ass out a window, conveniently hanging him from some cables. This gives them enough time to amuse that Myers must have been living under that house in the sewers for the last 20 years, because... Uh, well, it's a lot more convenient than the fact that not only did Michael escape from a certain death, but he's right behind you! Thus, Sarah runs for her life down dark corridors and shitty found footage cheeky cam until she reaches the shed with Tyra Banks. Seems the reason she's not helping is because she's bled to death hanging from the ceiling for God knows how long. Ah, oh, well, the point is Michael finds her again in short order. But don't worry, now she's got a motherfucking chainsaw! And that was for. Uh. Uh, lost count. Why do you have to kill so many people? He's still looking to add one more, so the gas all over the floor lights up, her chainsaw runs out of gas, and other various forms of fuck you take hold, until it looks like the end for Sarah. But what's this? Buster busts down the door to save the day! Trick or treat, motherfucker! You know the best thing about that line? It means the movie's almost over. With that in mind, Buster Rhymes whoops this motherfucker's ass, and he goes to end this. Well, guess we're not gonna have to worry about Myers making any more of the Myers bloodline to then later have to go out and kill for reasons. Therefore, shocking ending! Michael Myers is electrocuted to hell and back, while Buster Rhymes and Sarah survive the ordeal. Also, Deckard is still just sitting there watching internet videos. Really helped this story out. Ah oh, well, the point is the important character survived and Michael Myers is dead. Being wheeled into the morgue and left alone in a room with one person, surely truly dead and not going to give us any kind of... <coughs> yeah, let's just say we could see that one coming. Anyway, that was Halloween Resurrection. That's a pretty odd name for a movie that damn near killed the franchise. Holy shit, this was bad. Not the worst movie I've ever seen, but considering some of the crap I've watched, that's really not a compliment. Things got weird with the Thorn trilogy, but what in the hell were they thinking with this one? Myers coming back on Halloween to kill his family is kind of the established theme here. If they wanted to break away from that, why the fuck did they have him come back and kill Laurie Strode in the opening scene? That would make it seem like he is still very much interested in familial homicide, which he then ignores for the rest of the movie. Oh yeah, he thinks of anyone in this house as his family, but what the fuck about Laurie's son? We're just supposed to forget he ever existed, it seems Michael doesn't care about him anymore. Gotta kill all those random teenagers just so happen to be there. What's so frustrating is that killing off Laurie Strode would have been a terrible opening even if the rest of the movie was great. But it's so, so bad. None of the characters are all that interesting, and what little depth they're given really doesn't matter. Rudy knows about food. Good. Deckard lives a secret double life on the internet, and mildly helped Sarah out for a very short period of time which could have been edited out of the movie entirely, and it would have gone just the same. Overall, Halloween Resurrection is a terrible, 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 terrible movie. It insults the franchise with the way it treats both Laurie and Michael, and insults the audience with the puddle-deep characters we're supposed to get invested in. Finally, the extreme emphasis on reality TV, early internet culture, and found footage doom this to be a product of its time, and it can stay there, coming in at one less than convincing best friend decapitations out of five. And sorry for the lack of dancing Michael, but he's been off in the corner crying this whole time. Anyway, thank you all for watching, I've been Dr. Shadow, and remember, don't call 911 over bad special effects. Getting clubbed in the head with a nightstick hurts a hell of a lot more when it's not CGI.
trick or treat, motherfucker. <sighs> Rune of water. Rune of beer. Rune of Nintendo? The Rune of cock. The curse. Michael Myers is dead, being wheeled into the morgue and left alone. <laughs>